Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 survival horror game series and in today's video we are going to be continuing on with our objectives. So if you uh, look back at the last few videos we've been working on this cool system where the player can collect some logs and then with those logs he's going to be able to light a fire. Now we're also going to be attaching a objective system that we've created already and pretty much what I want to do in today's video is essentially set up this little objective complete um, you know UI pop-up so when you complete an objective like collecting all of the logs this will pop up on your screen and disappear after a couple of seconds and it's going to look really sweet and it's going to really add to the gameplay side of things. So what we're going to be doing, like I said, is we're going to be getting this all working, we're going to be taking the image from Photoshop and we are going to be importing it into the, into the engine, creating the UI widget and then setting up the animation and hopefully hooking it up to you know sort of the gameplay behind it so when the player actually has three logs this will pick up and we can change to another objective from there so the first thing that i'm going to do then is i'm essentially just going to pretty much change this into a png image for those of you that don't actually have the latest version of the hud with the objective complete thing in here don't forget the download link is down in the description below so once you've got that this go ahead and pretty much move it into a separate image the way I did that is I just created a new um, you know a new canvas 600 by 8 uh, by 80 and then I pretty much just selected the layers for the objective and then I just pretty much just dragged it across and from there and I also deleted the background as well so we can have a transparent background just so it'll fit onto our gameplay images really really nicely so once you've exported that out all we got to do is go ahead and bring it into the engine so let's go ahead and do that and once again just like all my other for textures I am going to chuck it into my textures folder so I'm going to navigate to my desktop or wherever your survival horror stuff is for me that's in a little folder called survival horror on my desktop and I am just going to go ahead and import the PNG file and it's as simple as dragging and dropping just like that and let's just double click that just to make sure that it's all good looks good to me so next thing we're going to do then is we're going to open up our blueprints folder and let's just go ahead and create a new UI widget. So the UI widget is pretty much something that we're just going to display on the screen whenever we, you know, complete an objective. So let's go ahead and create the new blue, uh, blueprint for that. So just right click, blueprint class, and then just type in widget and just click user widget, select and call this whatever you like. For me, I'm just going to call that objective complete. And I'm going to go ahead and open it up. And the first thing that we're going to do then is we are pretty much just going to add in the image for the objective uh, completed thing. And with that image, we're going to start to manipulate it as part of the animation. So we're going to be changing the size, the position and the transparency. So it sort of flashes and it isn't just sort of like a dirty little pop on the screen because we don't want that. So let's go ahead and add the image. And we are going to just go ahead and match these up now so we can find our texture in the textures folder, objective completed and with this just click the image, go down to brush and just hook it up just like that and let's get it in there. Now we've got to try and get the right sort of position, the right sort of size and everything so just go ahead and stretch it until you know you sort of get the size that we want. What I'm going to be doing for the animation is I'm actually going to ma be making it a little bit bigger over a couple of seconds and I'm going to be moving it up just like that. So I'm going to keep it nice and small for now and I'm going to keep it about there. So that looks good to me. So size wise, let's go ahead and see what we got. 300 by 51. Cool, that's looking fine. So the next thing that I'm going to do then is I'm going to add my animation and I'm also going to change the default color and opacity change the opacity down to zero because we don't want it to be shown by default because we're going to be doing some transparency work and we don't want it to be popping up and then disappearing um, if you you know if you don't change the opacity there's going to be all kinds of issues just make sure you change it down to zero create the animation call it whatever you want one I'm just going to call this uh, pop-up play for now and I'm going to go ahead and create that uh, and I'm going to add a few tracks. So I'm going to start off by choosing the image because that's a, that's the object that we want to manipulate. And I'm going to create the first track is going to be color and opacity. So at zero seconds, I don't want there to be any color. After a second, I want it to be, you know, fully opaque so it has a bit of color. And after two seconds, we are going to have it go back down to zero. So 
let's go ahead and make sure that's all working. So we got zero over here, zero over here, so it's still not working. So I'm going to make sure that I actually select that little keynote on there and just change that to one. And that will make it brighter. And then we're going to go over to two and we're going to set it down, back down to zero. So if we go ahead and pray, press play that on that now, you can see it sort of flashes on the screen there and that is looking great. So that's just one of the little animation things that we're doing to it. The next thing that I want to do to it is pretty much just add a transformation track. And what that's going to allow me to do is essentially scale it so I can make it bigger and I can also move its position so I can sort of make it float up to the top of the screen. So as for transform, we are going to change the scale so by the time it gets to uh, about two seconds we are going to change that size to something okay so I'm going to make sure I've got a track uh, not a track a key point at the beginning here for size and once it gets to two I'm going to make that something like 0 0.5 maybe and I'm going to do the same on both of those and once again I'm just going to go ahead and move this to the beginning I'm going to press play just to make sure that it's shown on the screen that is looking good and now I'm just going to do translation and that's pretty much going to allow me to change the position of it. So I am going to go back to the beginning here. I'm going to add my key points at the beginning. And then I'm also going to add some at the end. So what I'm going to do is by about one and a half seconds, I'm going to move this so it's at the top of the screen. So that's the wrong way down. And I'm just going to move it up just like that. Just moving this little thing so it's minus something like ooh, 380. And there we are. So let's go ahead and press play on this now with our little animation. You can see that's looking quite nice. It's moving back down because for whatever reason we've got this extra little keyframe that we don't need. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. And let's go back here. So press play. And it is looking good. That is one really sweet animation. Now there's one last thing that we do need to do inside of this widget. And that is we need to make sure that it actually plays the animation as soon as it's created. So on event construct we're just going to type in play animation. And target is going to be self. And literally all we need to do is just grab, grab pop up play and just hook that up to in animation and that should be great. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into our blueprint, so into the little counter that we created before with the logs and once it gets to free logs, we're pretty much just gonna create the widget so it shows that on the screen. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna open up the third person character because that's where we're counting it. If I remember, we did have a variable called number of logs or something like that. Uh, number of wood, there we are, that is perfect. And now I've just got to find the script for it, whether that is. So I believe that was actually in the wood item. So wood inventory pickup, and there we are, so it's just doing plus one, plus one. So now we're going to do a little check to see whether or not the wood, you know, the number of wood is actually free. free. So let's go ahead and do that as soon as my Unreal Engine 4 run crashes. Um, once again, this is a perfect video for me to, to ask you guys to make sure you share the video, like the video, and spread the word a little bit. So we've got our branch here, and what we're going to do is integer is equal to or greater than is greater than or equal to blah da 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 is greater than there we go it's greater than or equal to three and as for the value for that we're going to just hook that up to the number of wood so once it's changed we're pretty much just checking whether or not it's greater than three and if that's true we are just going to tell it to create that little widget and display it on the screen so let's go ahead and do that so from here we're going to do objective complete and owning player we're going to leave that empty and from return value we're just going to add that to the viewport just like that and from false we're not going to do anything because we want the player to keep being able to do stuff there's nothing we really want them to be able to do we're going to press compile play and let's go ahead and grab three of those woods so we've got one piece of wood there that is great and let's pick up the second one 
Still nothing popping up on the screen and hopefully as soon as we pick this one up now it should actually show us that little thing objective complete and that is looking great. Now you can make the animation a little bit fancier if you wanted to um, but for now it is looking really nice we've got some very basic functionality so the next step of what we need to do is pretty much just change the objective from the top right now and we're going to be doing that in the same way as we did for the little objective nodes that we've got uh, that we placed on the floor before. So it's looking really great. We've got our objectives complete coming up. We just need to change it. So we are going to be doing that in the next video. Thank you for watching. Make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. Share the word, share the love, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.